I will have my vengeance. God will write it on a stone tablet called the Ten Commandments. And I'm just going to be in every big biblical picture there was at this time. Her, released in 1959 and is directed by William Wyler, who's directed such amazing films like Mrs. Miniver and Roman Holiday. And this film stars Charlton Heston, Jack Hawkins, Hera Harit, Stephen Boyd, Hugh Griffith, Martha Scott, Kathy O'Donnell, and Sam Jaffe. And this film was recommended to me by Gary Hales. Thank you very much, Gary. I hadn't seen this in a very long time, and as I remembered, this is supposed to be a tale of the Christ, which... I, I, I did not get it all. Judah Ben-Hur is a Jewish prince living in the region of Judea. But one day his friend, a Roman soldier by the name of Quintus Arius, excommunicates them from the city. He imprisons his mother and his sister and sends him away to be a row ship rower. But because of this betrayal, Judah vows to seek vengeance upon Quintus. And it takes him on a journey through Roman ships and friendships and adoptions, moving all the way up to that very famous chariot race. Which I'll start off with that it's the best thing of the movie and i love that chariot race the cinematography was just revolutionary for that time and just how powerful it is to have eight sets of four horses each just riding and stomping for 10 laps around a racetrack just the sound editing that encompassed that that thunderous sound that the horses hooves were making it really built up the adrenaline inside of me just watching that scene but of course this is our big climax between judah ben-hur and quintus arias you know it's their big race because that's how two guys settle it out and gets their vengeance by a sporting event. Pretty trivial, but it was entertaining. And like I said, very revolutionary. This film won 11 Academy Awards, which ties the record for the most Academy Awards won of all time. I believe for the time, it actually set the record and then Titanic met it and then Lord of the Rings Return of the King met it. So the film industry, the Academy was all gung-ho on this movie. Because whenever you have those movies that have those big, large crowd scenes and all those extras and Technicolor and loud, bombastic, overly dramatic orchestral songs, of course we're giving it best picture. But you watch this movie now and you think, if this movie was released today, which I think it was remade a couple of years ago, which I have not seen that version, but if it was made today, it would not win best picture because this film is being hailed as a tale of the Christ. So we're talking about Jesus and the birth of Christianity and things like that and the crucifixion and his birth, the start of Christmas, kind of. Uh, where? What does that have to do with anything? The film starts and it's the birth of Jesus Christ. We have the the fun little spotlight shining down on the on the manger on the outskirts of Nazareth or Bethlehem, sorry. And then we go through the motions with that. We have the wise men coming over. We have the shepherds keeping track of their flocks by night. And then we flash forward a little bit. We see Joseph, Jesus's dad, doing some carpentry work. And then we go over to Judah Ben-Hur and his family and his, you know, nice white little privileged house that he has in the middle of Judea. Ah, uh, yes, the good old whitewashing back in Hollywood in the 1950s and 60s. I love it. And we stay with Judah Ben-Hur for the rest of the movie up until like the last... Oh, I want to say 10 minutes, but it felt like another hour and a half when we got to that part. So what does is, what is Christ have to do with anything? When Christ dies, he magically makes the rain all like magical rain and cures leprosy. But there's nothing Christ-like about Judah Ben-Hur and his story. The man was done wronged. His mother and his sister were taken away. He battles in Roman uh, uh, ship battles. He vows vengeance on the person that did him wrong. Didn't Jesus teach, like, love your neighbor? as yourself don't do the vengeance thing or spill blood shed and stuff like that <laughs> nothing christ like about this story and we're talking classic hollywood here because my god everyone is hamming it up if they're embracing a long lost friend they spend a good minute hugging and and smiling and fawning over everyone really just make a fucking meal out of it and the melodramatic score just swells up when when big things happen in the film judah your mother and your sister have leprosy <laughs> 
it's three hours of that, basically. And then an awesome chariot race. Now, the aesthetic of this movie is very impressive. We have a lot of extras, a lot of people that are just standing in the background, waving their arms. There's a lot of big sets that are built here that look extravagant. They look beautiful. The costuming is gorgeous, too. But like I've always said, the most important thing for me in a movie is its story and its plot. And this plot, what we get of Judah Ben-Hur, hey, it's a good vengeance tale, and then it ends and the film keeps going on. Just to shoo in this, this Christ storyline, I'm 99% sure that this whole tale of the Christ thing was shoehorned in here just to kind of bring in the Christian groups and to bring in all of the Christian families. Hey, this is a tale about Christ. We're all gonna go and enjoy it and appreciate it and then pray afterwards. And now as I'm doing research, I found that actually Ben-Hur was actually a novel written in the 1800s, which deals with basically the same thing. Judah Ben-Hur, he was a Jewish prince. He seeks vengeance because again, he was done wronged and his story kind of runs parallel with the story of Jesus Christ. And I say Jesus Christ like Christ was his last name. Well because it was. Right? I cannot wait for the comments on this movie. I I was raised a Christian so I know all of these stories but really I just fell out of just the whole organized religion thing. So whenever I hear religious stories, I like to poke holes and make fun a little bit because everyone should have a little sense of humor when it comes to religion. Please, for the love of God. So this film, in retrospect, it is an epic. It is a very long movie, extravagant sets, costuming, music, extravagant acting, very melodramatic. But when you get down to it, it's it's really it's really a simple, basic, and not cohesive story. I'll be honest, that chariot race saves the entire movie for me. Until we get to it, and then everything afterwards is just... It's it's nothing. It's a miss. I just didn't care. But it's absolutely an epic. I think it's one of those films that if you're gonna go into film criticism or if you're gonna go into making movies, it's one of those movies that you really have to watch. Just, you have to. Just to say that you have. Whether it's a rite of passage of getting through the dang thing because it's so long, or just respecting the revolutionary cinematography that happened back in the 1950s. I'm gonna give Ben-Hur a Tale of the Christ two out of five Blu-rays. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part in my videos where I randomly select which movie I'm going to be watching next. So let's take a look. Okay, a, a movie that um, I, I don't think I've ever actually watched all the way through, but definitely multiple, multiple parts of it. Just kind of here and there. Patch Adams. God, I miss Robin Williams. That, that death. I took so hard, as did a lot of people. And this movie you can always see like in the afternoons on USA Network, TBS, TNT, any of those channels. And I always catch it in parts. I catch one little part here, I catch the dramatic speech at the end over here, and then another part over there, the clown nose here. This, I've never seen it all the way through. So I'm actually very excited to see this. Anytime I get to watch a Robin Williams film that I haven't watched and just to see him just perform again and make people laugh again, I just, I'm always happy to do that. So. Excited to check it out. So everyone, have you seen Ben-Hur? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, please comment below. Let me know what you thought about it. And remember, we are trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2019. So if you like what you saw here and you like just hearing about people talk about movies, hit that subscribe button so you know the next time I post my next movie review. And if we get enough people, if we get to that 1,000 subscriber mark, I will torture myself by watching and recording my viewing of Arachnophobia, a movie that I haven't seen since I was a kid because it traumatized me. And if you have recommendations of films that you want me to watch on here, please leave your comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter. Leave your recommendations there and if I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout out on the channel. So I will see you next time with my review of Patch Adams. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.